Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Just want to give you a demonstration of the Seek Thermal in a wilderness woodland setting. This is the Canadian Boreal Forest. And I'm going to do a split screen demonstration for you here just to give you a sense of how the Seek might function outdoors in the wilderness. And one thing you're going to notice with this is that the Seek's camera is zoomed in by about two to three times, I'd say. So the image that you see in the Seek is actually a lot further than it appears on the Seek. This function, this split screen function is an option on the Seek. So this, I'm not using two cameras for this. I'm using the phone's camera contrasted with the dedicated camera that the Seek uses. Now you'll notice here when I cross over how much smaller I appear on the actual camera setting. Right now I'm about 30 yards away on the seek, it only looks like I'm maybe 15, 20 yards away. So this is a good thing. It's advantageous in that, in spite of the seek's poor resolution, it is giving you a zoomed in image. So that's something to keep in mind. This means that you can detect things potentially further than it might seem. You're detecting them. Now I sped up the video significantly here, it's sped up three times, it doesn't really look like it because I'm walking through snow, forgot my snowshoes that day, but uh, I go about to maybe 100 yards here, it's uh, quite a long distance uh, and I was pretty impressed that the Seek actually still did detect what was going on, so although it, you can identify what that is back there, you know, at, if this were at night, and remember that that you're going to see the same image at night as you do during the day, the exact same image because it's thermal imaging infrared spectrum. So you're seeing the exact same thing. So I was pretty impressed with its ability to detect because that means you would be able to do a perimeter scan and detect things at, you know, potentially a hundred yard radius so long there wasn't anything, you know, in the way of the seek. So I do a couple other demonstrations here just to give you a sense of how it might function. So here I'm going downhill and there's it's a bit more of a thickly, densely wooded area. You can't really tell here and, and you got to keep in mind that it looks like I'm only about 20 yards away right there, but I'm actually about 30 or 40 already. So I'd say the identification range right there would probably, you know, after about 40 to 50 yards, it be becomes very hard to identify what you're looking at in the wilderness, but you can still detect it. Now, I think this is very significant because that means it still has a lot of utility past that point. Even though you can't identify what you're looking at, at least you know something's out there. And if you're sitting around a campfire at night, where you're at a disadvantage because your eyes are trained to the fire and they're pretty much not sensitized to the darkness surrounding, this could be a very effective tool in scanning your perimeter to see what's out there uh, for four-legged or two-legged predators. Now, one thing that was brought up to me, and it's something I've totally thought about before, is if you're trying to use this for security purposes, it's probably not going to be that effective because of the fact that, you know, obviously uh, you're going to, when you're looking at the phone, the phone's going to be shining its light that it's emitting onto you and that's going to give away your location. But if they already know your location, if you're, like I said, around a campfire at night, then this extra bit of, you know, intel, if you will, uh, could be quite useful. I did a demonstration here just to give you a sense of what a person, an armed individual might look like if they were approaching. And this is about 60, 70 yards away now. And once again, I've sped the video up significantly, so not to take up that much of your time. And I'd say you only can really detect that the person is carrying a gun at maybe right here around 30 yard mark perhaps yeah and uh, so identification I'd say within 40 to 50 yard range depending on what it is depending on the temperature contrast 
uh, a detection probably up to 120, maybe even 150 yards under ideal conditions, but I think that's kind of pushing it. I think Seek says you can identify up to, what is it? it it's something pretty exaggerated, like 500 or 1,000 meters or something like that, or 1,000 feet. Uh, I don't know how how much I believe that, but it's kind of like those those radio walkie-talkies you buy, you know, they say they go 45 miles and they only go two miles, but for what you're getting, for the price you pay, it's actually not that bad. It's by no means, uh, you know, on par with the FLIR systems uh, that cost thousands of dollars. Mind you, this would have some useful wildlife applications and potentially even, like I said, security applications. Here I go again down into the bush just to give you another demonstration of uh, the SEEK's identification and detection capabilities. I think it can be a useful tool for a lot of things, even if you wanted to search for Bigfoot or something like that, you know, for all you Bigfoot hunters out there. But uh, let me know what you think about this. Just thought I'd give you a little sort of practical demonstration of the SEEK. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.